This is a postgraduate pediatric orthopedic video series, and this is video 8.1 of the positive treatment for club foot. Now, this video is a courtesy of Ponsetti International, and it is presented by the late Professor Ponsetti. I made this model of a club foot to demonstrate the proper manipulation to correct the deformity. Counter pressure is applied with the thumb over the lateral aspect of the talus, while the mid and forefoot in supination are gradually abducted. As the calcaneus abducts, it diverts and slides laterally to its normal position under the talus. The club foot cannot be corrected when counter pressure is applied to the calcaneo cuboid area because it prevents the calcaneus from abducting, in turn blocking the abduction of the whole midfoot. From the back we see that without touching the heel, when the foot and calcaneus are abducted, the heel evolves into valgus or into the curvature profiles of the subtalar joint surfaces. Colby, a nine-day-old baby with a right club foot and a left metatarsus abductus. The right foot is abducted in supination. With my left thumb, I am applying counter pressure over the lateral aspect of the head of the talus. A cotton bandage is applied over my fingers holding the toes. The foot remains in the corrected position while the cast is being applied. A plaster bandage is applied over my fingers to prevent crowding the toes. The bandage is tight over the ankle and loose over the calf. With my left thumb, I mold the plaster over the lateral aspect of the head of the talus. The plaster is extended to the thigh, holding the knee 90 degrees of flexion. The plaster bandage is folded several times in front of the knee. The first plaster maintains the foot in the improved position. The forefoot is supinated to correct the cavus. The plaster over the toes is trimmed off. Five days later, after removing the plaster cast, the foot tends to return towards its initial position. The foot is again abducted in supination with counter pressure over the head of the talus so as to abduct the foot and shift the calcaneus under the talus. A second plaster cast is applied. The foot abduction is improved. The forefoot is still in supination to correct the cables. I place my index finger behind the lateral malleolus to accurately locate with my thumb the lateral aspect of the head of the talus in front of the ankle. The medial ligaments are stretched to shift the foot laterally in front of the talus. With the third cast, the foot is in some abduction but are still in 40 degrees of equinus. Five days later, the foot is abducted again to further shift laterally the la navicular, the cuboid, as well as the calcaneus under the talus. The cast is well molded. The foot is now in 30 degrees of abduction, but is still in equinus.
Now the loose tarsal ligaments allow the foot to be further abducted and the equinus to be improved by dorsiflexing the foot. The heel and the medial malleolus are well molded. The fifth cast holds the foot in 50 degrees of abduction and 15 degrees of equinus. After removing the fifth cast, we see that the club foot is corrected except for the equinus. The tendo Achilles is tight. Under the lateral conditions and local anesthesia, the tendo Achilles is subcutaneously sectioned with a cataract knife one and a half centimeters above its insertion. The last plaster cast holds the right foot in 15 degrees of dorsiflexion and 60 degrees of abduction. A second plaster cast has been applied to the left foot, holding it straight to correct the metatarsus adductus. The left foot is held in 20 degrees of abduction and the right foot in 60 degrees. Both casts are worn for two and a half weeks. When the casts are removed, both feet are well corrected. The left foot can be dorsiflexed 30 degrees. The right foot 15 degrees. There is a good range of subtalar motion. A foot abduction orthosis with soft, well-molded plastic sandals will be applied. Two openings on the back of the sandal will show whether the heel is in place. The three straps hold the feet firmly in the sandals. The right sandal is in 60 degrees of our rotation and the left in 20 degrees. The orthosis is worn 23 hours a day. Colby returns two months later. She is now four months old. She has been comfortable with the orthosis. The feet are limber and well corrected. She has 15 degrees of dorsiflexion on the right foot with nearly normal subtalar motion. The left foot is straight. There are no scars and the lengthened tendon is well healed. To prevent relapses, Colby will wear the foot abduction brace at night and naps for about three years. At 13 months of age, the feet look normal. The range of motion of the tarsal joints is normal. She walks well. The right calf is smaller than the left. Isabella, a two and a half month old baby with severe club feet. After five plaster cast changes applied by their doctor, the parents were told that the baby would need surgery. The baby's feet are in severe equinus, cavus, adduction, supination, and the heel is in varus. There is a deep crease on the inner aspect of the feet. The ligaments and tendons are very tight, allowing for little correction at the first manipulation. The forefoot is abducted in supination while my index finger is applied on the head of the tails. A two-inch wide roll of plaster bandage is applied over the layer of cotton.
The plaster is molded at every turn following the contours of the foot. The forefoot is abducted in supination, while the thumb applies counter pressure over the lateral aspect of the head of the tailors. The thumb continually smooths the plaster over the tailor head. The plaster is extended to the upper thigh. The left foot is stiff and resists correction. The medial skin crease is deep. The forefoot is abducted in supination while a roll of cotton is applied tightly over the foot and loosely over the calf. Observe that I am holding the foot in supination and abduction with my left hand while my right thumb is over the head of the tailors. This corrects the cables and reduces foot adduction. The heel is not touched. A plaster bandage is applied over my fingers that are holding the baby's toes to prevent crowding them. The foot and heel are carefully molded while rolling the plaster bandage. In the finished plaster cast, observe that the feet are supinated. The plaster over the toes is trimmed off. Five days later, after removing the first cast, the baby rests on the mother's lap while the feet are manipulated. The cavus is improved by abducting the forefoot in supination while applying counter pressure over the head of the talus. The same corrective manipulation is done on the right foot. The medial crease is still deep. Pressure is never exerted on the heel. The manipulations are gentle. The baby does not cry. Now the baby is placed on the table. The plaster cast is applied while I'm holding the forefoot in supination and abduction. The heel is well molded. In the finished second plaster cast, the four feet are still kept in severe supination, needed to continue the correction of the cables. When the second casts are removed, we see the feet improved. The feet are manipulated again. The forefoot is abducted in some supination, while counter pressure is applied on the head of the tailors. The third plaster cast is applied while the foot is abducted with the forefoot in some supination. The baby goes to sleep while the plaster sets. The feet are held in some supination. Five days later, after the third casts are removed, the feet are quite improved. Again, the feet are abducted in some supination, placing the thumb over the head of the tailors. Now the fourth casts are applied holding the feet in 30 degrees of abduction. The legs are not externally rotated. A bottle of milk relaxes the baby. After the fourth casts are removed, the feet are quite noticeably improved. The cables is now corrected. The feet are manipulated again and plaster cast applied in 50 degrees of abduction while the plant reflection is being reduced. 
the cast are well molded and hold the feet in 50 degrees of abduction and the feet are not pronated. Five days later, after the fifth casts are removed, the feet are corrected except for the equinus. The dendo Achilles is tight. After applying a betadine prep and under a skin anesthesia, the dendo Achilles is percutaneously severed in both feet. The last plaster casts are applied holding the feet in 70 degrees of abduction and 15 degrees of ankle dorsiflexion. The arches of the feet are well molded. The baby was not bothered by this minor surgery. After the tenotomy and with the last cast on, baby and mother returned home to Idaho. Three weeks later, the casts are removed by their doctor. There are no scars on the corrected feet. A foot abduction brace is worn for three months full time and for three years whenever the baby sleeps. At six and a half months of age, Isabella's feet look normal. The feet are limber. At 14 months of age, Isabella walks well. Her feet are functionally normal. To prevent a relapse, she wears the abduction brace at night. At three years of age, Isabella jumps on the trampoline She easily crawls on the parallel bars and she dances gracefully on the balance beam Rosa Snyder's club feet, which I treated in 1956, represent the longest recorded follow-up treatment of the deformity. Now in his 40s, Ross has painless, normal-looking and functional feet. And this will bring us to the end of our video. We hope that you find it useful for your exam and for your practice. And we wish you all the best for your exam.